Hello there. In this video, we're going to talk about retargeting motion capture data uh, across differing skeletons um, and uh, differing characters and also differing rigs. Uh, you can do all of that in Maya. So, um, for instance, if we take a peek here, uh, this skeleton has essentially two joints for the spine, where this one has three. Uh, here we've got uh, the Unreal Mannequin. Uh, I just exported it out of Unreal. Here's the mannequin with the skeleton, and then here's the mannequin with a custom rig that was done with an auto rigger. Okay, now uh, we're going to use the human IK, um, and that essentially allows you, once you uh, set something up in human IK format, you can then uh, retarget data from one to the other. So we've got you know, a uh, shorter actor, we've got a taller actor, we've got the Unreal Mannequin, and we'll see how we can do that. So right now, um, for the character, I've got, I believe it's this one selected, and so I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to line it up with this uh, Danny right here. And so... If I press play, uh, you can see that uh, that actor is uh, conforming to uh, the Danny skeleton. Now I've got another skeleton in there too. So if we go to this custom rig, and this time I will use skeleton taken from a platformer motion capture shoot I did a long time ago. Okay, and uh, let's press play on that. So actually, they're uh, <laughs> they're they're both connected now. Now that would require a little bit of uh, the one with the red skeleton would require a little bit of tweaking. But the idea is that you bake the animation down to these characters, and then you can go in and edit them. Okay. Um, let's just show one other thing here. So we could also take um, one skeleton, uh, and then we can take uh, another skeleton. One's the one's a character, the other's the source. Now they both have animation on them. I'm not sure what's going to happen here. It might crash, but uh, let's play and see what happens. Yeah, so uh, now we're applying data from one skeleton to the other and also to the Unreal guy. Okay, now if we were to go back, um, let's see, none, let's go back here to uh, the Unreal guy. The whole idea would be to then go here and we're going to go to bake and we could bake this out to the skeleton of the character. Okay, so that data is now baked and so we no longer need the skeleton. This guy is just going to keep animating. Now if we switch to the other one, the one with the custom rig, now we're going to bake here, but it knows that this uh, it knows that there's a custom rig applied to this one, so let's bake out to that custom rig. Okay, so now I can get rid of uh, this source skeleton. 
So now, essentially what we have is motion gap capture data applied to a character with a rig on it. And we've also got motion capture data applied to just a uh, skeleton. Uh, now it's going to be easier to edit motion capture data if you've got a rig on it. Um, what's more is if we go to our uh, Unreal guy, so it's going to be him here. Um, we can also bake out to a standard Maya control rig. Okay, so this right here is a standard um, Maya control rig. Uh, it's very similar to Motion Builder. Uh, it's got uh, full body IK for editing. And so you've got a lot of options here. You can just edit with this native rig Maya creates, or you can make a custom rig to edit your data. So, uh, that's kind of a preview of what we're going to be doing. Uh, we're also going to be looking at uh, the time editor and motion clips. Now, prior to baking out this animation onto a character um, and editing the data in the graph editor, what you'll the easiest way to deal with the data is to work with clips. So here I'm. Uh, in the time editor, and I've imported a couple of clips here. And so just to show you, so I can play this clip, and then it'll jump right into that clip. So you can see that there's a little bit of a uh, uh, pop between the two. But you can come in and you can sort of blend them together. And by doing these, these blends, you can get rid of uh, your pops. And you can also edit the data so that uh, you could have one foot take over or start where the other one left off. So lots of things you can do with blending and uh, trimming, for instance. Then you'll take this data and you'll put it on either a custom rig or a Maya control rig, and then you can edit the data. By editing the data, I mean locking down feet, maybe speeding up a punch, speeding up a kick, uh, making a jump higher, uh, speeding the whole thing up so it's responsive to a button press on a controller for a game. So on these demos, we're going to be using um, motion capture data from class and uh, other sources from other systems. There's a whole lot of other places where you can go on the internet to find more motion capture data. One of them would be Mixamo. Uh, Mixamo is owned by Adobe, so you'd need to sign up with a, an Adobe account. And there are lots of different mocap moves that you can preview and that you can download and you can put on a character here at Mixamo. Uh, there's this Rococo motion, li uh, motion library. And so apparently if you download uh, either it's the Maya plugin or the Rococo Studio um, program, you apparently get 150 or 100 free motions with that. Uh, there's other places like, um, let's see, this is going to be... UT Dallas, uh, they have a motion capture library that they're offering to the public. I uh, think we'll probably do that as well at some point. Um, so that's what uh, motion capture editing is all about.
and I'll see you in the next video.